All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rechah HaKodash. That one honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopefully elect. It's the brother Azariah here with the Pittsburgh GMS camp. Coming at you with another lesson to the spirit and power of Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rechah HaKodash. Lord willing, it's edifying. Okay. In uh, Salat. So basically, yeah, my light went out. Alright, so basically, I just got through watching uh, the elder Manata Zagba out there in South Carolina, Myrtle Beach. I just got through watching his, his recent post. He just posted. Um, <clears throat> let's say I was crushed by a forklift. I don't know if uh, I think my brightness be too high. Let's see if I can lower that down. Yeah. As you can see the title. I was crushed by a forklift, you know, and it's a beautiful video. Uh, brother, uh, uh, a brother came out and gave a testimony, okay, uh, basically of uh, what happened to him, you know, how the Lord messed him up, and um, you know, but it, but the Lord pulled him out of all the, the 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 madness and folly that he was in, okay, <clears throat> and brought him into this truth. And man, this truth is a Boy, this truth, man. It's a beautiful. It's a beautiful thing, man. You know, um, there are some people that can find this walk grievous, but really, yeah, there's nothing else outside of this truth, man. This truth is immensely beautiful, man. You should fear Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, okay, that He won't ever take this truth away from you. <clears throat> you know. Um, but I just want to start off with this precept, you know, because. You know, like the brothers was going into in, in the clip, you know, <clears throat> it's by none of our own accords that we are in this thing, okay? None of us can say that we deserve the credit. None of us can can boast in any of the things that we do in this truth. No matter, you know, whatever the Lord revealed unto you, whatever, whatever, you know, none of you, none of us, none of us can say <clears throat> it was of our own accord. So let's just uh, read this first one. Matter of fact, I'm gonna get this, which the brothers did read in there. In there, uh, let's see it is. It's nothing that you did, okay? That made that made it where you were called in into this thing, okay? Let's see. So like this ain't this ain't the right precept. There's nothing that you did. Okay. <clears throat> it's all about the will of Yah by Shemia Okay. Ephesians two and eight says, For grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of the most high. You see? It is a gift of the most high. Okay. So it's a gift of the most high man. You you didn't you didn't you didn't do anything to deserve or you know to be saved, okay? The most high from the from the foundation of the earth chose the elect, okay? And chose who was gonna be called into this truth. You know, and he knows who's gonna endure into the end and who's gonna be saved. He already knows all these things, man. You know? He chose them from the foundation, man. <clears throat> it's a lot. So I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this chapter. Then I'm gonna read this next precept. Okay, right here. John 15 and 16 says, "Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you." Okay, and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whosoever, ye, so that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, He may give it to you. Okay. So, yeah, how should I chose us? Okay, you know, <clears throat> the sinner's prayer tells you. You know, ask you, do you uh, accept, you know, JC, that word JC or whatever, as your personal, you know, Savior, and Lord and Savior. And the thing is, it's not up to you. It's not up to you, man. Okay? You don't get to just choose the Lord. He has to choose you, man, according to the scriptures. See, Christians avoid 
what the scripture says, you know, because in most cases, the Bible defines itself. That's why it says precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. That's why King David said, through thy precepts, I get understanding. Because when you go into the precepts, you begin to understand why the scripture says certain things. You see, because people, people will look at it and, and say, you know, there's, there's a lot that, that can be understood by going into the precepts. Whereas Christians will say, well, that doesn't make any sense because over here it says this and over here it says that. And I'm just going to go with what everybody teaches. And I'm just, no, you can't do that. You know? <clears throat> so let's get some more information on this, on us not choosing, you know, this is how the Lord works. You don't get to choose who you are and um, whether or not you'll be saved. Okay. Esau didn't have a choice. You think Esau would have chose to be the wicked of the whole earth if he had a choice? Uh, not knowing the end goal or end what's gonna the end of the wicked, knowing what's gonna happen to him, I don't think he would have chose to be the wicked. But it wasn't up to him. Romans nine and eleven. Uh, I'll read it ten. And not only this, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of the Most High according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Okay. And, uh, you know, just by the way, I didn't like plan this lesson out. I just kind of doing an impromptu response. I didn't really gather any scriptures. I just got, took the last precept they went off of, and I'm building off of that, rolling through the spirits so of Lord willing. This is edifying. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna skip down. Uh, I'm gonna keep reading uh, Romans 9 and 14. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? The Most High forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So the Most High is gonna, it's plain. The Most High chose the nation of Israel out of all, out of all the nations on the planet Earth. He chose, he has always had a chosen seed. Even out of the two brothers, uh, Ab Cain and Abel, he had he had one that he loved and that he approved of, and he had one that he hated and that he didn't approve of. And guess what? Whether you can receive that or not, the Most High put the Spirit on each one of those individual brothers to do what they was doing. The Lord put the Spirit on um, uh, 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 on Cain to be wicked, and He put the Spirit on Abel to be righteous. Whether you can receive that or not, that's the cold cut truth, man. You see, and so. He's always had those who he's wanted to show mercy, who was he was going to show mercy unto, and those who he who he has slated to be judged and to uh to to get and to receive death, man. Okay, that's just how that works. So let's go back to it. Romans nine. Oh, right here, Romans nine and sixteen. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of the Most High that sheweth mercy. So it's not of your will. It's not of it's not of how much you do, or this or that or the other, which we understand. You got to do something. You see, you got to prove your love to your Bashim Yahushai. You know, you got to prove your love. But it's still up to the Lord whether or not that's acceptable. You know, because there there will be those like the scriptures talk about who will say, "What the hell? Who is all these people?" There are those that will say. Uh, I've done many, you know, we've cast out demons in your name and so on and so forth. He'll say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I knew you not. So it's not of him that willeth or of him that runneth. It don't matter what you do and how much of it you do and none of that. You know what I mean? <clears throat> it's the word of the most high. It's him that shows mercy. Right. Let's continue. For the scripture saith, so like you. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, I might have skipped one. Okay, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? The Most High forbid. Right, you know, I read that. So God forbid that there would be unrighteousness with the Most High. That's impossible. That's an impossibility. Okay. Verse 17, Romans 9, 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout the earth. So the sole purpose for creating Esau was to destroy him. There even be some of the house of Israel that were created for for death. 
that's it. That was their whole. It's gonna be their whole story. Is to die as a two third, and then be brought back into the kingdom. And none of us can control whether or not that's our story. All we can do is humbly pray and hope and cry out to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai that that's not our story. You see, that's the only thing you can really do. Even King David, a man after God's own heart, even King David asked the Lord not to take his spirit away from him and not to cast him away from his presence. He saw what happened to Saul, man. Saul was through, man. Imagine. Imagine being in this truth, man. With the access to the Holy Spirit that you have. Okay? It's a lot. Light keep going off. Oh, oh shit. I'm going to increase the brightness on the screen. You know, with the access to the Holy Spirit that you have. And just losing that. No longer being able to talk to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh No longer being able to get the judgment of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh To understand the judgment of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh You know, to to reach a point where you watch a video and you can't comprehend what it's saying at all. Or to reach a point where you don't remember the name of the Lord. To reach a point where you're so arrogant that you just, you know, uh, going against the men that, 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 that the Lord chose to teach you know that's a uh, that's a very scary thing man that's a lucky like man for this light keep going off uh, let's see if I press this again yeah. alright that's a lucky like but um let's continue man Romans 9 and uh, 18 says, Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. So the Lord, when somebody bugs out, and and, and somebody um, starts bucking up against, you know, the men that the Lord have chose, or bucking up against the scriptures, the most high chose them, the, uh, chose to harden their hearts, man. You see? Whom he will he hardeneth. Okay? And let me go into that. Uh, that word hard enough. It's Romans 9, 18. All right, Romans 9. Tom Strong's. Let's go down to verse 18. So verse 18 says, it's a lot. Romans 9 verse 18, that word for hardeneth is this. It says, let's hit play on it. If I can. Strong's G 4645, Scleruno. 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 All right, and it says, to indurate, i.e. figuratively, to render stubborn, to render stubborn or to harden. So he makes them stubborn against him. Why? Because part of the prophecy is that they must perish, right? You know, there's got to be a two third. You see, uh, it goes to the root word of uh, Strong's G4642. Uh, hard or tough, harsh, severe, fierce, and hard. Okay. Harsh, rush, stiff, stern, hard. Oh, let's see here. Let's get it. Let's get one. He that hard. Get a preset. All right. Proverbs 29 and 1 says, He that often being reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly, suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. You see? So the Most High have set up certain people to be reproved and to harden their necks. The scripture, you know, that's why our scriptures also say what? Let me see. Let me get it. Be there. I'm not. I 
I be remembering a lot of them, but I don't want to, like, just quote it all the time. Ezekiel 2 and 8 says, But thou son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. You know, and that's like what that, like what that brother was saying when he came up to the bros. He was like, look, I want to do what the Lord. I want to do what the Lord says do. You know. I want to do what the Lord says to do, man. And that's how we should all feel. You know, whenever we go, whenever we go off, whenever we, you know, have a, uh, you may have a certain dream where a demon may, you know, play on, play off of something and, you you know, or say something to you or, or try to make you feel like the Lord's not dealing with you or that the Lord cast you away, you know, and it can kind of bother you if you really want to be right with Yahweh Bashi and Yahweh Shai to, you know, where you start, you know, looking, you know, questioning yourself or, or, or doing self introspection because, you know, we know that that, we know that that's the, uh, that's what the worst thing, man. There's, there's a, there's a great punishment for those that are in the truth that, that lose it. That, um, let's see, let me get the scripture. The scripture is talking about, um, men that are set. What does it say? Uh, let me see, man. Let me get it. Sirach. 26 and 28 says there be two things that grieve my heart and the third maketh me angry and men of war that suffer with poverty and men of understanding that are not set by and one that returneth from righteousness to sin that third one says it makes him angry and one that returneth from righteousness to sin the Lord prepare such an one for the sword it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai man and that brother found out firsthand by that forklift crushing him. A forklift, man. A fucking forklift. You realize that's heavy. That's a heavy object, man. Stating the obvious, you know. To have that crush you. That had to be a traumatizing experience, you know. But those of us that are in this truth. You know, the Lord could do worse to us if we, if it be in our story, you know. That's why the scriptures say the beginning of wisdom is a fear of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai. Okay, you know. And also, at the end of that precept that says, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thine time and the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Okay, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. Okay, when you fear Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, it's a pleasing thing unto him. Because that means you respect him. That means you know of his power. You know what he can do to you. You see? <clears throat> so you know, I don't I don't think I'm gonna uh, drag it out too long, man. But uh yeah, that was a hey man. The Lord The Lord is a terrible oh wait, ooh, last closing precept. Close him with the prick. Because the Lord is going to give you back what you give to him. You know, as far as, um, just to put it in, in layman's terms, okay? Because ultimately we know it's up to him, but still, you know, let's get it. Uh, Lord willing, it comes up when I type this in. Psalms 18 and 26 says, With the pure wilt thou show thyself pure, and with the froward wilt thou show thyself froward. Okay? So, with those that, that are walking that way after the Most High with a, with a pure heart, with, with pure intentions, the Most High is going to, you know, matter of fact, with the merciful, wilt thou show thyself merciful, and with an upright man, wilt thou show thyself upright. There might be some more. With the pure, wilt thou show thyself pure, and with the forward, wilt thou show thyself 
forward. Let me see. Let me open up the whole chapter. For that will save the afflicted people, but will bring down high looks. Mm. For that will save the afflicted people and will bring down high looks. Okay, so the Most High is going to save the ones that are afflicted. You know, the ones that are going through these different uh, traumas and, and, and things of that nature. The ones who are enduring the afflictions. Well, they'll be saved. Another precept comes to mind, actually. <clears throat> I thought that was going to be the last one, but... This precept. Second Ezra seven. Okay, because eventually, those, there are those who suffer the afflictions righteously, and then there's the wicked. You know, there's the wicked who will be destroyed. Second Ezra seven and eighteen. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things and hope for wide. For they that have done wickedly have suffered the straight things and yet shall not see the wise. So ultimately, the whole nation is going to get persecuted. Okay. But the wicked are going to suffer those things and they ain't going to get no reward. But the righteous will receive a righteous reward. So with that, I'm going to give all honor, glory, and praises to okay, Yahweh, Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Hashem, Rechah HaKodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the whole from the leg. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.